What is up guys, my name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be talking about flipping a card using CSS and a teeny bit off Jaffa script. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to place a card down, right? So I'm just going to put this down, wait right there. I'm going to place a card down, we're going to click that button, it's going to flip and we're going to get started. So without further ado guys, don't forget to like this video, subscribe and let's get started. Yeah. No, I don't want to waste what's left. Okay guys, so as you can see here, there's this called developer cards um, icon just sitting there with a nice little gradient on it. If you tap that card, it will flip the card over, give you a profile picture, a name, a nickname maybe, or subtitle, and then some content about this person. So that's currently what's showing on this card. We could tap it to flip back or tap it to flip either way. You could set up multiple cards if you want to. You need to know how to handle like a for loop, but this is what we're gonna be doing today. It's a simple card. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm gonna cancel the current surfer that's running. I'm gonna CD out of this. I'm going to make a new directory. I'm gonna call this flip card. <laughs> Nailed it, flip card, uh, CD into flip card, and then I'm gonna run code dot, which is gonna open this up in Visual Studio Code. As you can see, Visual Studio Code is open. I'm just gonna dock this in a window to make it easier to see. I'm also gonna zoom in one. I'm going to add in index.html. I'm gonna add in main.css. And finally, I'm gonna add in main.js. Now there's only a minimal amount of JavaScript for this app, but that is fine. We can still work with um, what I've got here. So we're gonna create a boilerplate. So official Studio code uses Emmet. So if I press exclamation mark and tab, as you can see, it will auto complete this for me. So if I just tab down to this document, I'm just gonna rename this to something like card game. Cause imagine this was a game of cards and you had to flip your card and snap and stuff. That's what we're gonna do right now. I'm then gonna link in our CSS. So I'm gonna just link in main.css. As you can see, auto complete coming in there handy. We're also then going to script source our main.javascript so just linking in our javascript at the bottom of our markup before the closing body tag now the next thing we want to do is we want to create a card so literally we're just going to do dot card we're then going to have an inner part of it called card underscore underscore inner and now if i hit tab obviously we've got our card markup so let's just break this up to make it more readable scroll down a little there we go so we've got our card inner we now need to create a bit more markup. So we want a two card faces. So we're going to say card, oh, that's nice. Dot card underscore underscore face dot uh, times two. And now we've got two faces. Now this first one, we want to have the card underscore face hyphen hyphen of front. And this next one is card underscore underscore face of hyphen hyphen back. So we've got the front of the cards, which is going to go in here and the back of the card, which is gonna go in here. Now in the front card, we just wanna give it a H2 and call this something like developer card. So we're just gonna go here. I'm just gonna say developer card. And that is all we need for that part. I'm just gonna minimize this tab here just so we have more space to work with. So we've got developer card. In the second one though, we're gonna actually create some content. So we're gonna do dot card and we're gonna call it underscore underscore content. We're then gonna have a card underscore underscore header and right next to this, we're going to have, or right underneath this, we're going to have a card underscore body. Now, that is all we need for the outer tags. Now, for the inside, we need an image with a source of pp.jpg. I will add this image in. I This image is not included in the repository, which will be on GitHub with the link down below, but you can just grab any image and use it. Um, we're going to give this a class of pp. I know, very creative. I'm a genius. Um, and then we're going to create a h3 and call this Java script. We've actually missed a tag at the top there, but it'll be fine. We'll call this Java script wizard because that's what I'm known as on Twitter. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Tyler underscore pots underscore. And then we'll add a paragraph tag in and we're just going to give it some lorem ipsum. That'll do. That'll do. Um, and then under here, we're actually missing a h2, um, which we're just going to say your name for now. So Tyler Potts. And that is all the markup we need. So let me just explain this markup real quick. So we've got a card, which is our outer card, which is gonna handle our perspective and stuff. We've got the inner card, which is actually gonna be doing the flipping. We've got our card face, which is gonna be our front. And we've got our card face, which is gonna be our back. Then we've got our card content on the back, which is gonna hold all our stuff. We also have a little H2 just so there's content on the 
uh, front side of the card as well. Well, back side. In theory, this would be back side and the other one would be front side, but we won't talk about that. Cool. So that is that. We now need to actually create our CSS so we can actually see this. So the first thing we'll do is going to go margin, zero, padding, zero. Oh, that's not zero. Um, we actually go use um, root colors. So I'm just going or root variables known as CSS variables, uh, just so we don't have to write the same hex codes over and over again. And if we ever want to change the colors, it makes it really easy. You can use any colors here you want. I'm just using specific ones because I like these colors. And finally, an F3, F3, F3. There we go. So that's all the codes we're going to use. Now, I'll show you and explain how you use these in a second if you've never learned about them before. But they're just CSS variables. You can basically reuse them. If you ever use SAS, it's kind of the same thing. Now, if we create a font family, I'm just going to say Montserrat. I have this installed on my machine. If you do not have it installed on your machine, you would need to install it or, eat or bring it in via Google Fonts. We're going to set it to width 100% and a min height of 100 VH. We're then going to get the card and we're just going to give this a margin of 100 pixels at the top, auto to center it and zero on the bottom because we don't need to push anything down. We're going to give it a hard width of 400 pixels but this will also work with dynam <laughs> dynamic height as well along as there's some sort or some sort of ra ratio height as well. So give it height and the bit what actually makes it 3D we're not going to add in just yet and I'll show you that towards the end so you can see the difference. We then want card underscore inner which is going to have a width of 100%, a height of 100%. We're going to give it a transition of transform one second because we're going to be using the transform property to do our transitioning. Um, we're then going to transform style of preserve 3D so it basically allows it to move it will preserve it in a 3d space literally as the name uh, entails so once you've done that we then need to give it a cursor of pointer to make it look like it's clickable and then a position of relative because we need to add some absolute position in here we don't actually want to add in a card in a dot is flipped and if it is flipped we're going to do the transform of rotate y and we're going to pass through 180 degrees now as you can see here um so what's happening here is we're going to use javascript to apply a class to this once we click the card in a to add is flipped to the card which will then entail basically add the card to the or add this and it will rotate it for us so let's create our card faces so we created two elements here with card face you can see card face and card face um, and we just want to quickly style those. So we need them both to be position absolute with a width of 100%, height 100%. So let's say position absolute, uh, width 100%, height 100%. We then want um, something called back face visibility. Now, when you're using 3D, if you flip something, obviously sometimes you'll see the back end of it will be upside down or be rotated the wrong way. But using back face vis visibility, you can actually hide the back of it so it's like it's um, not there. So this will help us just hide. So we're just going to use WebKit prefix as well. Um, we're then going to overflow hiddenness. We're going to add a border radius uh, of 16 pixels. And I know why my autocorrect isn't working there. Um, and finally, we're just going to use a box shadow of zero pixels, three pixels, 18 pixels, another three pixels, and then an RGBA of zero, 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 zero point two. Not oh, too many things there. Now there's a couple more classes we need to do just to style it up. So I'm just gonna quickly go to, well, if I save this now quickly, we can actually go back to our terminal and I'm gonna run something called HTTP Surfer. You'll need to install your own server or you could just double click the index file to run this. If I refresh this now, there we go. So we have this card and as you can see it says developer card, tile of parts and it's all there, but it's not, it's not right. It's not right. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to go to a card face front. So we're gonna say card, face hyphen hyphen front 
and we're just going to have a background image. So this is how we're going to do our gradient. We're going to say linear gradient. I'm going to say two, bottom, right, far. So this is how we use the variables I was talking about earlier. So we can just do far and then primary. So the name of this um, property here, and we pass it through in a variable. And then if we also go far, and then we could do secondary, we can then also display this as flex, align item center, or justify content center too. This will just make the text direct center on the page. So if we just go card face front H2, we can then give it a color of white and a font size of about 32 pixels. Let's save, refresh. There you go. So now you can see this part of the card is now done. Now we need to go to the card face back and we need to actually flip this to begin with so you can't actually see it. So let's go card face, hyphen, hyphen, back. And what we're going to do is give it the background color quick and we're going to give it a background color of far, hyphen, hyphen, light. But then we're also going to say transform, rotate, Y, uh, 180 degrees to start with. So now if we save and we refresh, there you go. It's now disappeared to the back side of the thing. Also, I noticed my border radius is working. It's because I missed the 16 or the pixels on it. So if we refresh, as you can see, that's now fixed that. Now here comes the more styled stuff. So um, what we want to do here is add in, well, we've got to do the card content next. So we're going to say dot card underscore underscore content. We're going to give this a width of 100% and a height of 100% so it fills the area. We're then going to get the card, oh, not inside there, it's not SAS Tyler. We're then going to get the card underscore underscore header. And we're going to say position, relative, and then padding. A padding of 30 pixels, 30 pixels, 40 pixels at the bottom. We're then going to do a card header again, but this time we're going to use the after attribute. We've got to give the content of nothing. I'm going to say display block. Uh, I'm going to give it a position of absolute. I'm going to give it a top of zero, a left of zero, a right of zero, and a bottom of zero, and a C index a said index of minus one. Once I have done that, I'm going to give it a border radius of zero, zero, 50% zero. So what this is going to do is going to curve the bottom right angle of it. We then want to give it a background image of another linear gradient, but this time we're going to say two bottom left. We're going to give it the variable of primary again. Uh, we're going to give this 10% because that will make it a little bit more closer in the primary. We're then going to give the far off secondary and we're going to give this 115%, um, which will just move it out the way a little. So if we save that and then we go down to, well, for now, let's see, let's get the JavaScript in so we can actually flip this. So as you can see here, currently it does not flip. So if we go to main.js, we can actually run const card is equal to document dot query selector and what we're going to do in here is just look for the card underscore underscore inner and we're going to say card dot add event listener click we're going to pass through a function and in here we're just going to say card dot class list dot toggle not add toggle and we're going to say is flipped hit save we go back and we refresh and we tap as you can see it now flips around and that doesn't look very appealing does it that's not very great so let's add some more styling in there i need to also from the old file grab the profile picture add it into our new card paste and there you go so now we can actually add in that image so if we go back here or no the image should actually just appear so if we go down below card header we can actually get the card header profile picture um, so to do that, we're just going to go here and we're just going to actually do PP. Uh, we're going to display it as a block. We're going to give it a width of 128 pixels. Same as the height, 128 pixels. Um, we're going to give it a margin of 0 
auto 30 pixels for below. Uh, we're then going to give it a border radius of 50% to make it rounded. A background color of white. Uh, we don't actually have to do the background color. I meant border color or border rate of border <laughs> of five pixels solid FFF. And then we're going to use, I'm actually going to show what this looks like now. So if we refresh and we flip round, you can see it's there, but the image looks really stretched. So we're going to use something called object fit. And we're going to do object fit and we're going to say cover. Now, if we hit save again and we go back and we flip, you can see the image is no longer stretched. It's actually the right dimensions. Uh, so object fit cover acts like background fit uh, or back, sorry, background position, background size there, sorry. And it um, basically takes that variable. We're then going to get the card header H2. We're going to give it a color of white, a font size of 32 pixels, a font weight of 900. We're also going to say text transform. Text transform, that's not how you do it. Text transform of uppercase because we want it to be fully uppercase and then a text align of center save that we're then going to go down to card underscore body we're going to give it a padding of 30 pixels all the way around and then oh not that way and then we're going to do card underscore body again and we're going to get the h3 we're going to fit a color using the variable system again and we're going to get the dark color um we're going to give it a font size of 24 pixels, a font weight of 600, and a margin bottom of 15 pixels. We're then going to give it a card body. Oh, sorry, card underscore underscore body. We're using these. Oh, I've messed up. Uh, body. I can't type. I've lost it. I've lost it, guys. I've completely lost it. Uh, color. We're going to say far again, hyphen, hyphen, dark. We're going to give it a font size of 18 pixels and a line height of 1.4 or 1.5 uh, pixels. And that is all the CSS we need. So now if we go back and we refresh and we flip our card, you can see it's actually flipping really well. Now, this isn't actually the last element because if you can see here, it's actually not perfect. The card kind of looks 2D and it looks like it's just squishing and pulling through the other side. Now to give it that real effect of it doing a proper flip card flip so it comes off the page, we need to go up to our card element right at the top and we need to add something called perspective. Now you can add perspective and you need to give this some dimensions. So we can say 600 pixels for, or let's say, let's start off with like 200 pixels. So if we refresh and we do that, you can see it goes crazy and flips off the page. Now the higher you give this, the more uh, pixels it gets. So if we go 600 pixels and we hit save and we refresh, you can see it's a bit more tame there. It flipped, it's got that nice little flip and it looks really good. But I prefer a thousand pixels. Now a thousand pixels is the highest you can get to, I think. Um, and what it does is it still makes it look 3D, but it gives it that sort of real sort of dimension effect. So now when you flip it, it looks like it's an actual 3D flipping card now guys that is the end of this video if you enjoyed it do not forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and ring that bell and i will see you in the next video guys so thank you for watching this video and peace out